Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here with our next chapter of geography. Now, Iceland. Uh, yeah, what do I know about Iceland? Uh, I know that were they like in like Muddy Ducks Part Two? You know, did they face like the Americans in Muddy Ducks Part Two? <laughs> I don't know why that did that come to mind, but I was pretty sure of that. And uh, they're. Uh, I think I seen during like in Vikings, like if you leave like Scandinavia or like you know like Great Britain, like if you go across the Atlantic, like have Iceland and then they have Greenland, right? Uh, I think so, right? I'm pretty sure. And then, uh, all right, I'm not sure. Did they call it like, Iceland, Iceland, even though because because it, it's green and they didn't want like people to come there, so they called it Iceland for you know. To discourage people from coming there and then they named greenland greenland to you know because it's a little ice because they wanted you know to trick people into coming there is that right or i'm just on my way off <laughs> i guess i'll find out but uh uh iceland woohoo definitely interesting you know there, there's not gonna be any like border disputes with island right so let's check it out guys up in the north woohoo all right, before you, please hit that like and subscribe below, guys. Please and thank you. And we're going to get on with the show here. Do, do, do. Oh, there's a little picture here. Looks like ice. <laughs> uh, looks like ice. I don't really see it. Oh, he's right, because the, the TV show, Vikings, I mean, obviously that show just doesn't get recorded in Iceland, but I remember an episode... No, I don't want to say nothing about that TV show because then uh, it'd be a spoilers for people who haven't you know, watched it. So anyways, I'm going to get off the show. Three, two, one. Guys, as you know, I went to Iceland earlier this year, and in all honesty, if you just want to get a real taste of Iceland better than I could ever provide, check out my friend, this guy, Auskir. Subscribe to his channel. He helped me out when I was there, and he knows Iceland. Auskir, check out the Aus. Yeah, keep that one, bro. All for you. <laughs> It's time to learn geography now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. So, full disclosure before we start, my pronunciation for Icelandic words is gonna suck so bad in this episode. I do not advise you to play a drinking game for every time I mispronounce something. You will get alcohol poisoning and you might die. I repeat, <laughs> you could die watching this. Man. Iceland! Just the name invokes an obvious clue about where it is geographically. First of all, the country is located at the confluence of the Atlantic and Arctic Oceans east of Greenland and just south of the Arctic Circle. The country is divided into six constituencies, three big ones and three of which are confusing because they basically just split up the most populous areas in the west. Reykjavik is the capital and the northernmost capital in the world, which is split into two constituencies, north and south, whereas the southwest constituency is divided into four non-contiguous exclaves, huh. but they still act as one constituency, not four. So it's six small separate entities that act as three constituencies. Get it? <laughs> Yeah. Great! This was done to sure. help with the imbalance of the sparsely populated outer regions with voting since about a third of the entire country is located in the Reykjavik metropolitan area. Nonetheless, most of the country still refers to areas being located in the traditional eight region zones which are divided like this. The country has many domestic airports but the one large scale international airport is Keflavik International and the next two busiest ones are Reykjavik and Akureyri. Reykjavik and Akureyri are domestic- oh, oh. Uh, I, I know it is, but I know he's going to get into it anyway, but it's like, yes, green. It's kind of right, right? Iceland has green on it. Sweet. Look at the nice, you know, fields and trees here. I'm just getting into it. Yet, I know it's going to show me more, but I'm sorry. I had to, I had to, had to stop and say something. Reykjavik International and the next two busiest ones are Reykjavik and Akureyri. Reykjavik and Akureyri are domestic airports except for seasonal service to Greenland internationally. Iceland's domain is mostly encompassed around the main island, however they do own some smaller islands and archipelagos off their coasts. The most populated ones being Heime, Hrise, and Grimse, and some cool. in the south, like the newest island that just popped up in the 60s, Surtse, which is off limits to anyone except permitted scientists who study it. Otherwise, Iceland may be huh. rugged, but the islanders sure have paved a way for you to see it all. The Ring Road. This guy takes you all around the entire country, and depending on how much time you want to stop and see the sights, it could take you anywhere huh. between four-ish to seven days to complete. Hey, Brandon, you went on the Ring Road, right? Yeah. How long did it take you? 
Uh, about nine days. Okay, uh, maybe my facts were wrong. Otherwise, some top notable man-made sites and landmarks might include the National Gallery, the Viking World Museum, the stone carvings of Paul Guzmanson, the U.S. Navy D3 plane wreckage site, the Hit Viking Village, <laughs> the Sea Monster Museum, pretty much all of Akureyri, what? the Whale Museum, the Design Center, all over the countryside you can find turf houses with grass on their roofs, the country's iconic landmark and beautifully constructed icicle-shaped church, Hit I need to see the Monster Museum. That is awesome. Hold on a second. That building is awesome. My God, you guys got some cool stuff. It's like all the stuff scattered around like that road. So you got like a cool road trip around Iceland, you know, and just have cool stuff like this to see. I don't know. Anyways. Iconic landmark and beautifully constructed icicle shaped church. Now, as interesting as those man made sites and landmarks may be, they pale in comparison to what the actual land has to offer. Let's jump into the fire and ice. All right, let me just put it this way Iceland doesn't need an amusement park or roller coasters because the entire island is just like a wonderland in itself. First of all, Iceland is the 18th largest island in the world and the second largest in all of Europe. The entire country lies transected on the Mid Atlantic Range, which divides the North American tectonic plate with the Eurasian plate, splitting open about two centimeters every year. You can even see the divide for yourself with your own eyes. Nearby Reykjavik at Thingfjordr, with the largest natural lake, Thingfjordr, the land splits open and you can literally walk from Eurasia to North America. Underneath the waters, you can get even closer to the divide at the Silfra, whew, that was easy, known as the clearest water diving spot in the world where visibility can go up to 100 meters. Over 80% of the country is mountainous with the tallest point, Kvandalsnukur. 11% of the country is covered with six main glaciers, the largest one in the southeast, Vatnajökull, and the smallest one, which just erupted in 2010, Eyjafjallajökull. <laughs> with hundreds Please, of volcanoes man. and about 30 of them are consistently <laughs> active as the Longest river, the Fjordsau. Hold on, I need to go back. Uh, I'm sorry, man. It's funny. I can't help it. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my God, I'm crying here. <laughs> God, Rory. Okay. <laughs> And the and smallest one, which just erupted in 2010, with hundreds of volcanoes and about 30 of them are consistently active as the longest river, the Fjordsau, meanders through the deep central Hofskuller Glacier to the ocean. <gasps> so basically, the entire island is geothermal. Everywhere you go, chances are you can probably find a natural hot spring hidden somewhere in the remote wilderness. Not only that, but Iceland also harbors and capitalizes off of this unique, valuable resource as much as possible. When the first Vikings came in, they were like, Wow! It it is cold in here. I mean, I knew Norway was chilly, but dang! Is there anything here we can use to not, like, freeze to death? Hmm. Yeah, they killed a lot of sheep and made more wool clothing, but then eventually they found out how to generate power with the hot springs. Geothermal energy provides about a quarter of the country's power alone, and the rest is mostly hydroelectric from dams and renewable sources. Nice. Nonetheless, only about 1% of their land is arable, mostly confined to the south peripheral lowlands where root vegetables and kale and cabbage and cauliflower are grown, alongside numerous geothermal heated greenhouses that harvest warm climate produce, like tomatoes, cucumbers, and yes, even bananas, making Iceland the northernmost wow. banana-producing country in the world. World. Of course, the country also hosts a unique variety of Arctic wildlife like puffins, foxes, seals, narwhals, and the national uh -huh. animals, the griff falcon, and the famous highly accredited Icelandic horses. By the way, yes, it's true, Iceland is the only country with no mosquitoes. However, they do have two species. All right, are Icelandic horses, are those like wild or like are they all being kind of like caught and tamed now? Or like can you actually like, I don't know, just wander off in the wild? and run into like an Icelandic horse. I'm, I'm always curious when it comes to horses, you know, if you just like find them out in the wild, you know, kind of thing. So let me know in the comments. <laughs> uh, look at that, man, we got beautiful horses. Oh. Horses. By the way, yes, it's true. Iceland is the only country with no mosquitoes. However, they do have two species of midges. <laughs> He said yeah, midge is, which are similar to mosquitoes. And actually, one of the species does Aww. actually bite, so it's kind of like having mosquitoes anyway. <laughs> Iceland yeah. has biting midges. Keith, just... <sighs> Speaking of which, traditional Icelandic food is... Let's just say even my Icelandic friend said this. This is so disgusting. Listen to Why flavor. would anyone eat this? 
Yeah, let's just say the Vikings had some very unorthodox tactics when it came to food preservation. Oh, Dishes like sheep's head, stockfish jerky, head cheese, sheep testicles, and the famous haukach. What is it exactly? Well, let's just say... Hey, so I uh, got the shark, but it's poisonous. Uh, how do I eat it? Hmm. Oh, I know. Let's bury it into the ground until it smells like urine, then dry it out for a couple... Hold on. All right. Man, I, I was I was so pumped, man. I'm ready to go to Iceland now. But now they're making me double think this. <laughs> Come on, guys. The food's good. The food's right over there, right? Let me know. The food's good, right? Because right now they're turning me off with this food. I mean, better than it seems, sounds, right? They're, it's better than what they're making it sound, right? I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah. Come on, guys. I know the food's got to be good. Mm. Oh, I know. Let's bury it into the ground until it smells like urine, then dry it out for a couple months, and then cut off the brown crust, and then serve it. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> no, 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 no. There are some delicious redeeming Icelandic foods, though. Yeah. They are known for making some amazing smoked lamb served with bean salad and grilled haddock and herring dishes. You can literally drink almost any water from any stream, pond, or lake, or river in Iceland. The whole island kind of acts like a filtration device for the glaciers. You have places like the smooth, conical, kirkju... Never mind, it already answered the question for me. That food looked delicious. And that, look at that landscape, man. I could just go through like a hike through a, you know, we don't even need a road or trails or nothing. Just go through a hike, man. That looks beautiful. I mean, I didn't realize how cool and awesome Iceland was, man. And I'm only like halfway through the video, it looks like. So, Iceland. Impressed. Acts like a filtration device for the glaciers. You have places like the smooth conical Kirkjufell Mountain. Brandon has a tattoo of that. The Skaftafet Crystal Ice Cave in Vatnajökull. The Kjolur Trail in the Highlands. Literally like every five kilometers you'll find a waterfall. And don't forget the geysers in the south. Pretty much all of the West Fjords region is empty and beautiful for you to explore with no tourists. The sea monster of Kvitsurkur, Dragni Island, Gryodkjau Caves, Mayfell Green Volcano on Black Sand Beaches, Krafla and Naumskarth, Drangsnes Hot Tubs, the largest hot spring, Kunukver, and the open exposed fossils of Hagibyanya. Scott, dude, man, I want to say something, but he keeps making me smile and I can't get the words out. I'm sorry, I know this video is probably horrible because I. <laughs> uh, but yes, I, I just love keep going back and just like taking in the terrain here. Look at that, man, that's beautiful. That's got to be cold, though, right? I mean, that'd be cool to go swimming. Like, is that like warm? Maybe like a hot spring? My God, the country is beautiful. Look at that, man. And yeah, you can just hike wherever you want, right? I mean, it's not like it's not trespassing, right? I mean, do you say you can just kind of like wander off, right? Or is it like, I don't know, maybe like some parts are like tapered off or you're not allowed to go? I don't know. I'm loving this video though. Krafla and Naumskarth, Drangsnes hot tubs, the largest hot spring, Kunukver, and the open exposed fossils of Hagibyanyarskarthnbur. If you went against my disclaimer and played that drinking game, you should be in an ambulance by now. Speaking of drinking, Icelanders are awesome people to socialize with. Let's meet them, shall we? Now, if the Nordics were a family, Iceland would be like the little brother that got lost at sea from a shipwreck, got stranded on an island, and became a wild man. First of all, Iceland has a population of about 335,000 people and is the most sparsely populated country in Europe. About 92% of the country identifies as ethnically Icelandic, about 4% are Polish, and the remainder are other immigrants from all over, mostly Nordic, West European, and a few Asians mixed in as well. They also use the Icelandic kroner as their currency, they use the Type C plug outlet, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, being Icelandic is actually very unique genetically in contrast to the rest of their Nordic cousins. Basically, way back yeehaw, the Vikings were like, hey, we're sick of Norway. Let's make a new home. Oh, but wait, we need women. But most of the Norwegian women were like, uh -uh. so they made a quick stop to the British Isles and kidnapped a bunch of Irish and Celtic women and brought them over. About 70% of all their women, that is. To this day, a typical Icelander actually has a portion of Irish or Celtic roots in their blood. Now, obviously, if you are one of the few lucky people that hasn't ended up in an ambulance yet, you'll have noticed that the Icelandic language is incredibly unique, often touted as one of the hardest languages in the world to learn. Wow. I mean, half the time, the letters make no sense. F can make a V or a P sound. Sometimes P and a T make a F sound. Sometimes the G makes a W sound. These two letters both make a th sound. And sometimes 
when there's two L's, it makes like a <laughs> sound. Most Nordic peoples have a hard time cracking the Icelandic code, except for the Faroese people on the Faroe Islands. They seem to have a similar sense of pronunciation and grammar as the Icelanders. Icelandic and Faroese are the closest languages to ancient Norse out of all the Nordic languages. If you give them a script written in ancient Norse, chances are they could probably understand it. Whereas Norwegians, Swedes, and Danes are like, ha! Nope. Now because of its small population, Icelandic culture is very communal. Chances are everybody either knows each other or they know somebody who knows another person. Therefore, an ingrained sense of trust kind of roots itself in the mindsets of most people. This is why Iceland has one of the lowest crime rates in the entire world, sometimes topping off at number one. And also, as wow. of 2014, they were elected the world's most peaceful country according to the Global Peace Index. Oh, and by the way, in Iceland, nobody technically has a surname. They just adopt the last name dependent on their father's first name, and they just add son or dotor after it. So for example, a man named Alex with a father named, I don't know, Bjarki, would be named Alex Bjarkison. Or if it was a woman, her last name would be Bjarki Dotter. Sorry, Bjarki, you oh. just popped in my head. You rock, man. Hope you're doing well. That's, Icelanders that's cool. are thrill seekers. They live in an extreme landscape, so they make the best of it and they will ski, paraglide, rappel, skate, dive, jump, and experience anything that gives them adrenaline. Some of the top notable Icelandic people might include founders of Iceland, Ingolfur Arnarsson and his wife, Hedvig and brother, Kjörlif, Leif Eriksson, the first president, Svein Björn. Son, musicians Sigur Ross of Monsters and Men, Emiliana Torini, Moom, Goose Goose, of course the most famous resident Bjork, Oscar nominated director Friedrich Thor Friedrichsen, Hut Thor Laxness, handball superstar Olafur Stefansson, Magnus Uren Schiving, Fian Paul, and of course everyone's favorite strongman Hapthor or Thor the Mountain, Julius oh, yeah. Björnsson. Now as small as Iceland is, they've made a huge impact in the world's media outlets. Somewhere in the late- Thor the Mountain, one sec. the mountain right here all right you gonna finish the video with me buddy i like the mountain game of thrones awesome all right i can't really hold him up the whole time i'll put him down right here but he's watching with us that guy's a beast man that guy's huge Julius Björnsson. Now, as small as Iceland is, they've made a huge impact in the world's media outlets. Somewhere in the late 90s and early 2000s, word spread fast, and to this day, tourism is almost getting out of hand as they get over three times their own population in wow. tourism every year. Hotels need to be built, staff need to be hired, and diplomacy is key in operating the whole deal. Which brings us to... Sorry, I apologize. Now, Iceland has a problem. A good problem. Too many people like him now, and it's all happening too fast. First of all, Iceland has always had good ties to the USA and Canada. The US was the first to recognize Iceland as a state after independence, and both countries not only give some of the biggest business, but also house the largest communities of Icelanders outside of Iceland. Finland is like the mysterious, cool, new rebel friend that they just made. They enjoy both being outsiders because although they are both Nordic, they are not considered Scandinavian. When it comes to humor, they totally get each other and click instantly with dry, semi-dark undertone jokes. Sweden is like the older brother that they love, but is too busy working on his flow charts to hang out with. Denmark is close, although Danes practically have no idea what skiing is, considering their flat landscape. Most Icelanders learn Danish in school first before they learn English, even though they think it's pretty useless. When it comes to their best friends, most Icelanders I've talked to have said Norway and the Faroe Islands. As mentioned before, Icelanders have historical roots to Norway, and the two have had very close relations, especially since they both can relate to being subjugated under the Danes at one point in time. The Faroe Islands are like their weird cousins that totally get them and love to hang out with. It's a magical moment when an Icelander meets a Faroese person. In conclusion, Iceland is a land where cold meets hot, old meets new, small yet big, horrible fermented shark meets your dinner plate. I hope you're still alive, and if you are, stay tuned, because the big guy, India, is coming up next. India, you're next. Uh, yes, Iceland, man, surprise. Like, I, didn't really, I really didn't know much about you guys, I'm sorry. But you guys are awesome. I mean, I really enjoyed this video. I mean, it's definitely entertaining the way, you know, obviously, I'm sorry, like, he, the way he was pronouncing stuff, it was just funny. But, uh, yeah, definitely a beautiful country, you know. Man, I, yeah, I want to visit a lot of places, man. But, like, Iceland, man, like, it looks like such a peaceful place where, like, I don't know, maybe if you just want to be left alone with, and uh, I don't know, just a sightseeing, I don't know, cool drive alone, I don't know, it just seemed like a very peaceful place where if you didn't want to be bowed, you just, you just wanted to enjoy, I guess, out and about and just enjoy yourself, it looks great. And, uh, yeah, man, it's, and the crime is way down, obviously with a low, low population, people kind of knowing each other, you know, where we get around, so 
that's obviously way down. But yeah, definitely cool. I uh, definitely impressed. Uh, uh, great, great video uh, geography. Now I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I, I'm sorry. I, I you know, kind of, I was laughing a lot. I'm sorry. Um, so, anyways, guys, uh, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate. It. I hope you hit the like and subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you guys in future videos. Going on to what, what did they say was next? India. Oh, there we. That's that's their next video. And uh, yeah, continue. Alphabetical order. And yes, everyone have a great day. Thank you very much. Peace. I am out.